In the dark. Squanto lay in the bottom of the ship. It was dark in the hold. Only a little light came in around the door above. Something moved in the darkness. Someone spoke. Who is there? It was a man, and he spoke in the Indian language. Squanto answered in the same language. Who are you? I am Wawano, said the man. I once knew a man named Wawano, said Squanto. Are you of the Patuxet tribe? Yes, said the man. Then you are the man I knew, said Squanto. Do you remember Squanto? Yes, said the man. Long ago, he went with the white men. He never came back. He did come back, said Squanto. He is here. I am Squanto. He told Wawano of his years in England. He told him how he had come back with Captain John Smith. I was going to my village when I met Captain Hunt. He and his men tied me and brought me here, Squanto asked. Can you take the ropes off my arms and legs? No, I am tied too, said Wawano. Yesterday I saw the white men on the shore. They were fishing, and I went to help them. They threw me down and tied me with ropes and brought me here. We have done them no harm, said Squanto. Why have they done this to us? I do not know, said Wawano. I cannot stay here, said Squanto. I must go to my people. Tell me of my father and mother, Wawano. They are old, said Wawano. They talk of you. They say they will never see you again. I must go to them, said Squanto. Help me get free. But there was no way for Wawano to help him. The next day, Squanto heard a noise above his head. There were footsteps and loud voices. He looked up. He thought someone had come to set him free. The door opened above. Men began to drop down into the hold. Squanto could hear them falling all about him. He could hear them shout and groan. The door closed. The men called to each other in the dark. They were all shouting and talking at once. They all spoke in the Indian language. Squanto and Wawano talked with them. The men told their story. There were twenty-five of them, all of the Patuxet tribe. They had come to trade with the white men. They had brought their furs to the ship. The white men had taken them prisoner and tied them with ropes. "'Why are we prisoners?' cried one of the men. "'What have we done?' "'What will the white men do with us?' asked another. "'Where are they taking us?' Squanto could feel the ship moving. If only the ropes were off his arms and legs. He could set all the others free. They could run up to the deck, jump into the ocean, and swim to the shore. He twisted and turned, but he could not get free. The ropes were too tight and too strong. That night, the door opened. Someone put down a ladder. A little sailor came down the ladder. He had a lantern in one hand and a kettle of food in the other. Beside each Indian, he put a biscuit and a saltfish. He went up the ladder and came back with a pail of water and a pan. He set the pan on the deck and poured the water into it. "'Why you do this to us?' asked Squanto. The little sailor did not answer. He went back up the ladder. The Indians could not use their hands. They had to eat the food off the deck. When they drank, they had to roll over to the pan and put their faces into the water. Every night, the little sailor brought food and water. Every night, Squanto asked him, "'Why you bring us here? What place you take us to?' At last, the little sailor told him, "'I didn't want to do it. Some of the others didn't either. But we had to do what the captain said. The captain is taking you across the ocean. He is going to sell you there.' "'Sell us?' said Squanto. "'Yes,' said the little sailor. "'You are going to be slaves.'